person's idea of what a Porsche should, should be, regardless of cost. And these are extremely expensive. They are. But you can justify every dollar. And when you break it down to how many hours and hours go into building it, suddenly the cost per hour doesn't seem so bad. Reimagined by Singer, the 964 model. You know, I don't know anything about wine. I, I can't tell champagne from grape juice. I don't know anything about it. My taste buds from years of eating, getting food from people in paper hats has been totally ruined. So I, a fancy restaurant means nothing to me. But a well-executed ship, it's priceless. It's worth <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. When you get in a car like this that has been, quote, reimagined, that means what Singer does is they take an air-cooled Porsche, preferably from the early 90s, and they redo it perfectly, exactly the way they think it should be done, regardless of cost. Because so much of lack of perfection is because of cost-cutting. I mean, we'll give you this, but we have to take away that. What if you could just build it 100% the way you want it, using all the aircraft fittings and doing all carbon fiber? And this is the example. This is a perfect example of the work they do. This is Steve Davis. He's uh, one of the singer guys. You're the customer relations guy, customer right? Customer relations guy. You help guy. people decide what they want to do with Try their Try to car. figure out how to create a dream. Right. And it's amazing because all Porsches are valuable, but Porsches are not rare. And there's so many of them around. You've done, what, 130 something? About 130, yeah. Because okay. I remember when they started, I thought they were some know, outfit in Austria up in the hills somewhere, you know, eating bratwurst yeah. and working on Porsches. And then I find out, well, they're, they're two blocks from my garage. Yeah. How long have you been with them? I've been there uh, three and a half years now. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Not quite from the beginning, but uh, got my feet in a bunch of these cars. Well, I mean, it's really exciting to have a car done Perfectly, and you do the whole car, right? You won't just do an engine. We do or... absolutely everything. Right, right. From media blasting all the way up to creating this. Right. Well, that's, you know, to me, the best automobiles were always one man's vision. And I say one man because most cars were designed by men, but it could be women now, too. True. But one, one person's vision, whether it's W.O. Bentley, whether it's Ferdinand Porsche, whether it's whether it's Duesenberg, you know? So many cars now were designed by committee that they're all good, but they don't excel in any one thing, you know? This is one person's idea of what a Porsche should be, regardless of cost. And these are extremely expensive. They are. But you can justify every dollar. And when you break it down to how many hours and hours go into building it, suddenly the cost per hour doesn't seem so bad. Right. I think that's fair to say. I mean, all carbon fiber fenders, right? Carbon fiber fenders, everything except for the doors on the outside is carbon fiber. So that saves about how much in weight? It's uh, 2,700 pounds. Wow, this is 2,700 pounds. pounds. And you've got approximately, what, 390 horsepower? 390 horsepower. Now, in this era when for the same money you can get 1,000 horsepower, 900 horsepower, it's different. You've got to look at power to weight. You know, I've got a 63 Porsche Carrera, which comes in the books at 150 horsepower. And yet, it's incredibly fast because it's lightweight. Oh, yeah. The power to weight ratio is very good. And, and it's all about the complete car. Black roof for some of these guys. Are you a manufacturer? No, we're a restorer. So a client brings us their 964, and we spend about 4,500 hours on the car over about a two year period and they get this back. Wow, okay. Very nice. So this car has velocity stacks so you can kind of hear that throaty sound like carburetor, which I love, especially in an open car. Yeah, you know, it's like fine wine or good art. You, when, the more you examine it, the more you appreciate it and the more you understand it. And I love the fact that singers are meant to be driven. I don't think anybody takes a singer and then puts it in their collection in the museum. I hope to not. Sit on the floor. No, yeah. they don't. 
know, it's funny because we shoot up here in the hills above my garage in Burbank, and we all see the Singer cars coming the other way, covered with camouflage or tape or tape. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you got the Singer. We gotta catch that guy. But the feeling of being made out of a solid billet, which of course it isn't, but it, it feels it if it is. There's no flak flex. There's no chassis. You don't see the hood do that. It's just it's just amazing automobile. It's a stiff chassis. You can feel it when you go out of a, a driveway. Well, you know, when I pull out of my driveway, I felt that wheel lift. Yes. It didn't automatically droop yeah. down as it would in most cars. Especially an open car like this. Right. Yeah. Well, this, this roll bar was meant to add a certain amount of rigidity. Yes, of course. Yeah. But it is a 91 chassis, 1991. So we go through it. We take care of all the panels. If we find anything, any rust or deterioration we take care of the panels and put everything brand new again well that's the thing i love about it is it's still an analog car you know to, to adjust the rear view the outside mirror here you move this i don't have to find a switch and move it left or right and press the electric button i mean it, it drives me crazy you know i like a radio i turn the knob on i turn it off and so what you've done here you take a car that was pretty incredible when it was new and you take it to one person's level of perfection. Well, actually, your level of perfection, right? Because <laughs> if, if the customer doesn't match your expectation or wants to, to cut corners, you don't do the car, correct? We don't cut corners. Right. It's, it's all about doing this and doing it the best that we can. Now, I imagine when you started, there must have been some purists who, oh boy, here's a guy, another guy coming in trying to screw with something that's already perfect. Did you have to deal with a lot of that? There, there's always the purists, in which I'm kind of fall in that camp myself. But once you're around these cars and you look at what goes into them, you know, the fit, the finish, the gaps, the flush. Right. This is serious. Now your boss is Rob Dickinson, the singer, correct? The founder, yes. He's the founder. And so many people have the idea they're going to be car, car restorers or car builders. And they always fall by the wayside. What, what do you think the reason was singer was so successful? Rob has the philosophy that everything is important. Yeah. He, he becomes a little obsessed about the details, which all of us have become obsessed about the details. You have to when you build something of this quality. You know, it's funny because most obsessive people about cars fail because yeah. the car is never good enough. <laughs> Whether it's Doble with the steam car, he built only 40 cars, but each one was a prototype because he would do it and they go, that's good. No, 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 and, 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 and keep changing it. Yeah, even yeah. even Gordon Murray with the McLaren F1, you know, the same kind of deal. The cars are constantly evolving, so it's, it's never untouched. So we're, we're, but it's nice we live in an era where we have people who really appreciate the car as an art form. Hmm. You know, I mean, when the McLaren F1 came out, it was close to a million dollars, and no car had ever cost that much. Yeah. So, well, how could any car? Well, that's ridiculous. And, and consequently, of course, now they go for $20 million. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's nice that we live in an era where this kind of thing is appreciated. Because I think you all remember when you could buy, well, my brother bought his Speedster for $800. Uh. This 58 Speedster <laughs> for 800 bucks. I think he sold it for 1200 My father said, you're a genius. <laughs> So you use the original block to the car? So we use the original case right. and the uh, cam towers. That, everything else is, is uh, redone and sourced. I notice the tank has no red line. It does. Oh, yeah, I see it. Way right up there. there. Yeah, seven, seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah. yeah. The horsepower, the curve, it goes all the way up. But it's truly a light car. Like, this is a light car. Yeah, this is a light car, the modern standard. It's like your 356 with 150 horsepower, right. you know. 2,100 pound car. Now, this is not a high, there's no power steering on this, No right? power steering. Right. Yeah. But it feels like power steering. I'm one of those people, that if my car's not right, it ruins my whole day. You know, I mean, to me, when you adjust the clutch, you do a little something, and you go, ah, oh, well, now, yes. now it's shifting perfectly. I mean, it does make your whole day. It's one of the things you either get it or you don't. It's nothing like a well-oiled machine to make your day, to make you feel as if all the world is at peace now. Everything's connected. I like this wheel very much. 
the 993 box gives a good feedback to it. It is a power assist, the steering, but yeah. Do you ever work with any earlier Porsches, like the 71? No, this is, a, we, we had the, the previous generation, the 80s, that we did the first couple cars off yep. of, and then we kind of settled on this. Right. <coughs> and I imagine you have quite a waiting list, don't you? We have uh, over 130 on wait. On wait? Yeah, which is a two-year wait. Wow. Trying to keep those people happy is always a challenge. Yeah. Americans like stuff yesterday. Yes, they do. Yeah. I remember when Maybach introduced that big Mercedes. I, they asked me to do something and just the introduction. They said, we're going to set up centers where people come in and they can order their car. And I said, how long is it going to take? Well, oh, maybe eight weeks. And I said, you know, some Americans don't do that. They want to walk in and go get that yeah, one. You know? yeah, yeah. And it's true. They, nobody wanted to sit and look at fabric. And they, I, I know when I see it. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, you know? So that's the difference with us. We go through everything right, with the client. Right. And part of that experience is what the client likes because they're typically self-made. Right. Know, they, they, they know what it goes into making this thing. You and know? they like the bespoke quality. Yeah. And, and it's theirs. Yeah. You know, there's certain colors. If, if you come to us with a, a color, we had a client come with a bathroom tile and said, match this color. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what the inspiration was, but yeah. so we matched it and then we retired that color. So nobody else is going to have well, it. You know the Harley Earl story. You know that story? Mm, what's that? Well, he went fishing one day. He's a deep sea fisherman. And he said, some blue shark or something. He says, this is the color I want on the new Corvette when it came out in 60. Uh, but you know that famous blue? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. So he, they would come into his office. He'd take their paint sample. He'd hold it up to the shark on the wall. <laughs> and they'd go, no. And after five times... What they did was, at the end of the day, after Earl had left, they snuck him in his office. They repainted the shark on the wall, oh, the color they wanted. So when they came in the next day, he went perfect. It perfect. matches. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a legendary. That's a legendary that's great. story. But I think it was Bill Mitchell. Not Harley at all. I think it was Bill Mitchell. So I've had those moments with Rob where I've come back with color samples and it's not quite, not quite, not quite. And you're convinced you hit it because you did every spectrum possible. Right, right. But some people just have that eye. Have any singers been wrecked or damaged? Uh, knock on wood, we had one hit a curb, but that was about it. Oh, okay. So I can but no stuffs. Yeah. That's something you can... You can it's a restoration. So even yeah. if a car comes off of, uh, you know, a client doesn't want it anymore, right. you can then put another paint job on it because it's still just a restoration. Right, right. right. Yeah. You know, I didn't realize Reimagine was part of the name. I just thought it was Singer, Reimagined by Singer. But so Reimagine is actually part of the name. It, it is. So, so when we came up with the name, we came up with Singer, and our friends at Porsche wanted something a little bit different. Yeah. So we had to come up with Reimagined. Right. It's used in everything now. All the, yeah. the bank commercials, everything. So you yeah. reimagine. Right. We started a bit of a trend. Have you had? Have you redone any old uh, roof cars or any of those other guys? No, no, just just singers sticking to our one thing. No, I mean it was a, you know one they had done as a nine six four and then redone it. You know. No, no. I was up at uh, Canepa a couple weeks ago, and they were redoing one of the yellow birds. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Incredible. I drove one of those. That's an incredible car. That, yeah. What do you think of that one? That's number one, right? Yeah, nice yeah. car. I like Ruby. He's been to the shop a bunch of times. He and his wife, and they run the business together. And, but he's an actual manufacturer. Now. Yes, yes. So they take bodies in white. Yeah. And then they can, even now, they, they do a completely carbon car. The new Yellowbird. They changed some dimensions. I mean, they... They took it to another level. Do you limit customers on horsepower? A guy comes in and says, I want a 900 horsepower. I'm sorry, we only build the 650 or We, we yeah. only build to, to this car. Um, right. And it's kind of, you know, the transmission is matched with the engine, matched right, with right. the body and the suspension. So we have this nice package that we kind of, kind of uh, evolved into. Too many cars that changed hands, right? Except for that one guy. 
There's uh, there's maybe two a year, maybe three, yeah. not very often. We just had another one in uh, Abu Dhabi come up. Is that a manual car? It's a manual yeah. also, yeah. You only do manuals, correct? Well, no. we've, we've done a couple Tiptronics now. Yeah. So uh, we, we have a gentleman that bought one for his wife and uh, it's a Tiptronic, right. it's a Targa. Yeah. A mint Targa with bone white interior, very oh, Miami. Oh yeah, I don't We have a client that's got an all wheel drive, a C4. And he took it up to the Alps. Oh yeah? Drove it in through the snow in the Alps. There's a video online of it. So oh, people drive them. Oh, you do the all wheel drive? We do, well. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs>